it's time to move on from our moorings at the uh, Toby Carvery here in Stoke and heading up in the general direction of Hare Castle Tunnel. But, uh, I think we're going to make a stop along the way, way for museum, pottery museum that's there apparently and see what the day brings. So the canal's nicely kept in this area. After the Toby Carvery it winds its way around to a modern industrial park where there's lots of office buildings and um, a Wedgwood factory shop. And it's all nicely kept. It's a factory outlet for the uh, Rule Dalton and Wedgwood products. Massive great water park there. There's a heron on the left hand side, literally just landed on the bank. Is it going to stay there as we go by? Well, just going for an afternoon stroll. Okay, a visit to Middleport Pottery, which is on the canal side. So this is the Middleport Pottery Heritage. centre which you can moor up outside and go and investigate it's the main entrance way down and the, you can just see the canal at the bottom with an old heritage narrowboat moored down there Who remembers flying ducks that everybody had on their chimney breast back in the day? Wash day, copper. And then the tongs for lifting the washing out with. There's a picture there of the canal as it was. And we're moored outside. 
to that whole row of what was individual houses, cottages, is now used as offices, storage and independent traders in the courtyard on the other side. Beautifully restored brickwork. And as a comparison, take a look at how the bricks are on the houses right across the street there, they're dirty. Mm, obviously there would have been so much smoke in the air in those days. Everything got black. And then the one we walked around is the, the one that's just on the end there. All the old ledgers. Just imagine the clerk sitting in here in this bay window with the nice stained glass windows. They would have been the elite. I guess that's where they sent all the bills from, that typewriter. A few red buttons on there for overdue accounts. And this is the bottle oven. Which is inside the giant outer brick built kiln. difficult to get the uh, scale of it just on this uh, but it is immense just incredible and this is where they would have put all the wares to be fired No such thing as health and safety in those days. The sheer scale of it and how hot it must have been to work in this environment. No longer they didn't, no wonder they didn't live long. Thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces of china porcelain produced over the years. In the day, all these um, old factories, all the woodwork used to be painted that dark brown everywhere you went. It made inside extremely dark.
So that's Dane historical cargo boat and that's pop chippers moored right up behind it and that part of it is the uh, boatman's cabin where they would have lived basically not a lot of room in there My word, this is the workers washroom as it was. There's a giant bath in here too. Well I wouldn't call it comfortable, but I'd call it interesting. So back in the day, public baths were commonplace for the working classes as uh, they wouldn't have had a bathroom at home, only an outhouse. That's the exterior of the bottle kiln that we were in earlier from, uh, from the back of it. It's the only last one surviving on the site. The iron straps round it to reinforce it. And that was the chimney for the steam engine. It powered the whole factory until the 1970. Again, that's pretty incredible. the boiler. They would have shoveled coal into there. Bolton Engineers Burslem. never ceases to amaze me the heavy engineering that used to go on. Longport Road, Road Bridge, stokeboats.co.uk. Buildings part of uh, this Stoke on Trent's industrial heritage. I love the open canals and countryside, but I find the uh, industrial parts really, really interesting, really fascinating. And there's another. Uh, over there on the other side of the road there. So 
as the site of what would have been a pottery at some point in its history. It's just a shame that it's surrounded by rubbish. That could be uh, restored and could be magnificent heritage centre to visit as well. Looks worse than Steptoe's Yard at the moment. Westport Lake on there's also Geese City. Modern housing front in the canal at Westport Lake. So we're at the uh, Hare Castle Tunnel. Which is totally deserted at the moment. Uh, there's a lock further up that's closed, lock number 57, so I don't think there's any, anything coming from the other end for a couple of three days. And we're the only ones here at the moment. I'm gonna fill it up with water. And go through the tunnel in the morning over 1.5 miles long James Brinley's tunnel was the longest in the country with the canal water at the uh, Hare Castle tunnel looks sort of orangey rusty type colour and it's because of the high concentrate of iron in the rocks locally and thousands of particles of iron colour the water. Uh, we're 61 miles from Shardlow and 31 miles to Preston Book to go. Well, if you want to walk up over the top, that's the flight of steps that's taking you up the top. My old bones ain't going to do that. It's actually a very nice building they've put on. They had style back in the day. It is pretty dark in there. Originally two tunnels, the one on the far left I guess was the entrance way to the uh, second tunnel which collapsed with subsidence no longer in use. And tomorrow when the volunteers are here we embark on a journey through the tunnel. 